What's up YouTube? So today I've got one of my friends, uh, Subaru Outback, back into my garage. Uh, this is a car that I've done a few videos on. I actually had the engine out of this car and replaced the cylinder heads. Uh, the timing belt had snapped and bent pretty much all the valves. So uh, it's actually back here today. He feels like he, he may have a stuck on brake caliper. So I'm gonna go around basically jack up all the wheels and see if any of the brakes are hanging up and uh, basically do a little brake inspection just to make sure that none of the pads are wearing down or none of the sliders are actually seized um, because if it's something that I can get freed up for him today and just do a quick service on that's what I'll end up doing but while the car's here uh, I'm not quite sure how much mileage he's put on it since I did the work but I just want to have a basic look over uh, you know just see if anything weird's happened, anything's come loose, there's any kind of leaks. Uh, he hasn't requested it. It's just my own personal thing I like to do. And uh, just looking from under the hood here. I mean, the thing looks so dry. It, uh, just looking at the top of the cylinder heads. Everything looks just beautiful up top. So I expect... Uh, expect the same thing down below this car's in such good shape and really has no no complaints about it other than that he feels like maybe just a little bit of hesitation when trying to leave off and uh, and uh, I don't know if he's maybe felt one of the wheels getting a little bit hot but uh, when I just drove it in into the garage I didn't really feel anything but uh, brake calipers or C sliders are pretty easy to identify as soon as you jack up one of the wheels and just start feeling so We'll get to that point and uh, try and identify which wheel it is. Okay, so I've had the rear wheels up in the air, both spun quite freely. Uh, I've gotten to the front, jacked up the entire front of the car, and I'll just show you what's going on here. So this wheel here actually has a little bit of free spin to it. You can see as I stop spinning it, it continues to free spin just a little bit which is what we're looking for the right side is definitely the problem not as only is it <laughs> not gonna free spin but it's very difficult to turn you can hear noise out of it every time I go to turn it so I'm assuming this calipers seized up um, but I'm going to take off the wheel, make sure it's not just a slider issue, which the amount of feeling on it, I highly doubt it. And uh, we'll have to uh, think about getting a replacement caliper and uh, banging it on there so it doesn't uh, do that anymore. Okay, so we're going to have a little peek underneath the car. Have a good look at these head gaskets. Look how clean that head is. No seepage from anywhere. Have a look on the other side. It's just as nice over on this side. No signs of uh, oil or coolant leaking from anywhere. Really dry. Like, really dry. See, it's kind of important after you do a really large job on your own vehicle because you can't always look at somebody else's you know them might move away or you might just lose contact with them and never talk with them again but to be able to look at what you've done in the past months later and thousands of miles later really uh, gives you extra confidence the next time around I mean you saw how dry that is there's absolutely no problems with this car and even though I've done like dozens of head jobs I, I really can't say how many I've I've probably done at least a dozen of my own. Uh, it's just, it's extra, it gives you extra confidence to take on a bigger challenge later on. And uh, you, you, uh, you, you don't, you're not so intimidated by the work that's in front of you. So yeah, the brake caliper sticking on. That, that is such a common issue here. I've never seen it any, anywhere else that I've ever lived across Canada. Uh, Northern BC is a, like the seized caliper capital of the world <laughs> uh, I, I can't even say how many I've done in my own garage now uh, 
fortunately, I've I've only I've my own vehicles. I think I've only run into like two seas calipers. Um, it must have something to do with the humidity here, uh, but I really can't explain it. And it's just a common thing. Uh, and of course, you know when that happens, your brake pads are bound to go low, warp a rotor, so you're pretty much into an entire front brake job. And uh, I mean, just that Impreza that I did a, lot, a little while ago for that really strange vibration ended up being a seas caliper. So uh, I got to go about trying to find one. I know there's not going to be one around in town, so we're going to have to order one in. Um, but uh, I'll go about getting that installed and making sure that that's all good. So yeah, it's a couple days later. We've got all the parts. Got uh, four new rotors, new pads front and rear. A uh, set of front brake calipers, front brake hoses, and he also included some parking brake shoes. So I think that's going to make some good content for this video. I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to show you the parking brake shoe in installation and proper adjustment, so that when you pull on that handle and set the parking brake, it actually feels good. You don't have to pull it all the way to the end. Um, a lot of people. I notice that they do they do a cable adjustment and assume that that's that's a good parking brake adjustment but it's really not it's still applying the shoes too late and uh, there is an adjuster like a regular set of drum shoes for parking brake shoes and getting it adjusted properly means that as soon as you pull that brake up shoes are engaged and the brakes will lock so yeah I'll get set up and uh, go about pulling apart one side and showing you how to go about changing your parking brake shoes. This job is essentially done the same way on all Subarus. Subarus are very similar one to another. Uh, very little differences from what I've ever seen. So uh, typically we're going to start with taking off the brake caliper, the bracket, removing the rotor, and that'll get us down to where the shoes are so that we can uh, start letting the springs go and pop the shoes off to replace them. You also definitely want to make sure that your parking brake is off before you start. Uh, you might be fighting to get a rotor off and it's just not coming off and everything breaking apart before you actually get it off and then you realize, oh, the parking brake was on the whole time. So if you're ever wondering why your, your rotor won't come off the rear, it's usually because of this, this ridge that builds up in here. So you can see where the, sh the shoe's been sliding around inside there. And, and to get the, off the rotor, it needs to go in that direction, and the shoes pretty much get caught on this ridge as you're trying to pull off the rotor. And uh, sometimes you, I mean, you can just bang away on it till it pops off. But um, if, if you can get to the adjuster and adjust down the shoes, sometimes you can collapse them a little bit so that it will get off. And that's uh, that goes for most drums. But the rotor is off. Here's our set of shoes. Uh, so you see we got two springs up top, two retaining springs on the sides here, and another spring on the bottom where the adjuster is. Okay, so I'm going to start by taking off these top springs, and I'm going to use basic hand tools to do this whole job, so uh, it's more likely that you have the same tools that I'll be using to do this. Okay, so I usually start with a pair of side cutters, and you just want to grab the edge of the spring up here like this, and you should be... Uh, wearing eye protection if it's not something you've done before and you really want to get a good hold of that spring you don't want to slip and crack your knuckle on a wheel stud but at the same time you don't want to you don't want to have too sharp of a pair of cutters and end up cutting the spring so with those two guys off I mean, they they take quite a bit of force to come off, so don't think they'll they'll just pop off nice and easy for you. You want to take off this little kind of shoe retainer that goes in behind the springs, and uh, we'll start by taking these out. So these just need a 90 degree turn, and usually just a little wiggle back and forth, kind of push them in and out, and eventually they'll they'll let go. They're just old and rusty and they don't like to move very well anymore. And the same on the other side here. Just to push in, quarter turn, and that one's off. 
And now you can see the, the whole thing's coming loose. And you should just be able to spread these out enough so that you can swing it around. If you have a look at the camera, like, so we pretty much have everything. The lower spring and the adjuster are still on it. I don't like these springs, they're really rusty. Let me just pull on that and release that spring. And then these should just come apart. Get all the pieces to the adjuster. And that's one shoe off. Now to get this shoe off, there's actually a clip right here. So I'll just try and drive it on the end using the screwdriver as a punch. And then if the, the clip is actually being stubborn and you have a new one to put on, you can just grab a hold of it with some side cutters and start twisting it. It will come off. There you go. And usually while I'm in here, I'll take some brake clean and just kind of hose everything down. Rinse off all the brake dust that's in there. Try and not get it all over the camera. Or me. Another thing while you're in here, it's a good idea to try and loosen any of the rust that's on the hub or the backing plate, any of the really loose stuff, because it uh, can drop down into the shoes and cause noise. Now going back together, we get our new shoe and new clip. Just sit the horseshoe clip on the end of that peg take your side cutters and just squeeze that guy right together like that and that's on there sometimes if uh, you know if you think it's gonna be together a long time you rarely use the park brake sometimes you can put a little bit of anti-seize on that peg and uh, it'll just help it move a little bit more freely definitely not required though so we'll set the uh, adjuster onto the new shoe and the spring. Grab the other shoe. Actually what we're going to try and do is get the other shoe onto the spring and then just pulling it by hand. We should be able to pull the other shoe over onto the adjuster. Kind of like that. And then just kind of put things up into place like here. Just uh, hold it with one hand for now. With your free hand, you're gonna grab one of your retaining pins, and then you you basically just get it around till the the pin falls into its hole. Give it that quarter turn, locks into place. Now you don't have to worry about holding that side as much. Grab your other pin for this side. Get this one into place, quarter turn, lock it in. And then just uh, grab your shoes and kind of recenter them up. Then once things are in kind of in place, because this guy may keep on dropping out on you, uh, normally it'll just rest there and you can kind of guide the shoes onto it. But you just lift out one shoe, and just slide it down into place. It's got like forked in on both, si both sides of it. And you just want to make sure that that's going, the shoe is dropping down into that fork on both sides. Because if it doesn't, the shoes won't come all the way together and meet at the top here. And then we'll uh, put this shoe retainer back in place. It'll probably move around and drop. Might have to adjust it after getting the springs on. Now you, you can use the side cutters to get the springs back on but it can be a little difficult. If you use a, just a screwdriver and kind of, you want to sit the spring onto it like that. Now mind you, I do have brake tools for, for doing this. 
But like I said, I just want to show you with basic hand tools, it is possible. It's not too challenging. And then, and then once you have things kind of in this location, all you're going to do is just slowly pry the spring over into kind of something like that and clip it on itself. And once you get the spring holstered in this other shoe, the same thing over on this side, you just pry it over and uh, give it a little pry up into place. Make sure that retain uh, that clip is in place and that both springs are not wrapped around each other like they are. Kind of like that. Much better. And that's it for insta installation. And now for the adjustment. So when adjusting drum brakes, whether it's for your parking brake or regular drum brakes, you might slacken a parking brake a little bit more than a regular drum brake system, but it's done the same way and with the same concept. So with your new rotor, you're just going to want to slide it on and you want to see how much actual resistance is against this thing. And really, I mean, there's nothing. And you see down here at the bottom, everything's loose and uh, really there's no tension on anything yet so I'm gonna hold the spring up just with my finger and I'm gonna start winding this adjuster out just by hand I can start to feel it's getting a little bit tight we'll check that and actually I mean I would say that's probably pretty close to perfect but I'm actually gonna probably just turn it down just one one notch Maybe two. And then uh, I'll try it again. I mean, I got really lucky the first time there. That would be perfect. Uh, you just want to feel the slightest, not even drag when you turn it, but just when you're taking it off, you don't want all kinds of floppiness to it. You want to make sure that you're fighting those shoes just a tiny bit to get the rotor back on but that it will come back off. You don't want them too tight that it won't. And then once that's on there, you're good. You want, now that this is on, you can actually go and check the handle and see what the actual parking brake handle feels like and how far you have to pull it. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and install my new set of pads and go on to the other side and do that. And then I'm going to whip the car around, jump on the front, and get into some front brake calipers. But basically, I'm just going to show you what the uh, front looks like. And all I have to do is just hook up my line, do some bleeding, and I'll be done this job. So I'm all finished. I went for my road test. Everything's awesome. This car stops unbelievably hard. Uh, really pleased with the outcome, actually. I, I was surprised to see, you know, just doing a standard brake job on all four corners how hard this car will actually stop. The uh, parking brake adjustment is absolutely perfect. The handle pulls up just just enough. You don't have to pull it up very hard. Uh, it holds the car in drive which is what it's intended to do. And uh, yeah, if you like this video definitely give it a thumbs up and if you haven't already hit that subscribe button for me. Leave your questions and comments further down below and I'll see you in the next one.